Hello everyone, this is Mrs. Basega here with the Unit 1 Review Guide. And we're going to look at it as you would see it, as a iPad working on this review. Your test will be similar in length, it might actually be a little bit shorter. And here's what it would look like. You would see the questions listed across the top, and then you'd be able to go through. Okay, you'll also notice that there are points labeled here, and that way you can give yourself an idea of how much something is worth. This question we know is worth one point, but this one that is select two is worth two points. Several of you only put in one selection, which means you probably lost a point somewhere in there. As you go, if you have work that you have partial credit for, like you said it has the same mass, and the same weight, but only one of those is correct, you would get one out of two for that part. Alright, so how to use this video is skip ahead to problems that you want to see me go through. You don't have to watch the whole thing unless you really want to. So let's get started. Number one, a buggy pulls horizontally in a book, but the book isn't moving. Which statements is true? I had tension is equal to the force of friction. And the reason I know this is true is because tension and friction would both act in the x direction. Weight does not, so it cannot be A. And the forces have to be equal because the book is unmoving. This is in static equilibrium, so the forces that pull left equal the forces that pull right. It's not the force that pulls right equals the force that pulls down, so it can't be gravity, it can't be weight. Our 850 Newton astronaut trains on Earth. On the moon, that astronaut would have the same mass and the same inertia. Mass is proportional to inertia, so the more massive the astronaut, the more inertia they would have. And if their mass didn't change, the inertia wouldn't change. The key word for number three is this block is moving to the left with constant velocity. Constant velocity is a special term. In fact, every time you see constant velocity, I want you to think to yourself that that means dynamic equilibrium. Every single time you see constant velocity, think forces are balanced. And if forces are balanced, that means the object in motion stays in motion. It's all ready to moving to the left, so it's going to continue moving to the left at constant speed, but only if we have eight newtons left to make the net force zero. For number four, we're talking about going to a different planet. They would have the same mass and the same inertia on the new planet, but Jupiter has more weight and more force of gravity. The 2.5 times smaller in this problem is a distractor. Just because it's an option doesn't mean something needs to go there. In this case, I'm pushing a refrigerator on a garage floor with an applied force to the right, and the refrigerator doesn't move. I'm choosing between A and B because these are both talking about static friction. Your applied force is balanced by the friction force because right cancels left. Your applied force is to the right, and your friction force is to the left. It's not canceled by normal force. It's not the force that goes right is canceled by the force that goes up. That doesn't make sense. So it's B. Six is inertia. In this case, as you pull the tablecloth from under the place setting, the objects stay in place because there's no additional forces acting on them. There's a minimal friction force, but it's acting for so little time that it doesn't significantly change the motion. The key difference between velocity and speed is velocity includes direction, which is actually why my answer to number nine is negative 10, not positive 10. Now, some people were having trouble getting these to drag and drop correctly. What you can do when you're working on this is when you click on position, for instance, then I can hit positive and I don't have to drag it over. So you can drag and drop, right? But if you're having trouble, like you'd have to scroll down a lot, click the button, then put it in the correct category, and then unclick. So if you're having trouble drag and drop, that will help. But let's talk about why I selected position as positive. 
lots of people put the position as negative, but it's actually the velocity is negative. Position is positive because no matter what time I select, let's say I pick a time of one second, I end up with a positive number. At one second, that's positive 90. At two seconds, that's positive 80. At five seconds, it's positive 50. You get my drift? I know speed is positive because speed is a scalar. Speed is always positive unless you are unmoving. But this person is definitely moving, so they have positive speed. They have negative velocity because the change in position is negative. And to help you think about this, we're going to write something for a second. Let's say we did our change in position. That's xf minus xi. My initial position, xi, was 100. The final position was 0. Ah, I wrote those backwards. My initial position was 100, my final was 0. 0 minus 100 is it goes 100 meters backward. The change in position is negative. So the velocity, when we go do change in position over time, is also negative. It would be negative 100 over 10 to give me negative 10, which you will see in just a second. Finally, the acceleration is zero. You can either click and add it to zero, or you can drag and drop over there, whatever. Acceleration is zero because this is not curved. If acceleration was positive, it would be an upward facing curve. If acceleration was negative, it would be a downward facing curve. So for this problem, we've already calculated the velocity. It says, give your answer as an integer. Do not include units, so negative 10. You can show your work if you want, but that actually makes it harder for me. This will grade you correctly. So do I have a whole number? Yes. Do not include units? Done. Now we're going to drag and drop again. Match the following position versus time to this corresponding dot motion map. Well, I've got a constant velocity forward graph. So I'm going to match it up with constant velocity equally spaced dots. I've got an unmoving graph, so I'm going to match it up with a single dot that doesn't go anywhere. I'm going to take my two acceleration plots and switch them. And now let's double check. Our first graph shows a downward facing curve, so acceleration is negative, and that means it starts fast and goes slow. So that's matched correctly. Constant velocity means equally spaced dots. Curving upwards means positive acceleration, so getting farther and farther spaced apart. And finally, unmoving matched with dot. Question 11 and 12 refer to this hammer problem. The equation we're using here, even though you're not writing out work in particular, the equation you're using here is fg equals mg. On Earth, the scale reads 54 newtons, and on Earth, g is 9.8. Dividing both sides, m is approximately 5.4. Now let's see what we have for options here. It says round your answer to the first decimal place. Do not include units on your answer. So if I put in 5.4, that's to the first decimal place. That's no units. If you put 5.5 because you did 9.8 for gravity, that also works. Now we take the hammer to a planet where it weighs 81 newtons. On that planet, I'm still doing Fg equals Mg. But now I have to use my mass from before. 81 equals 5.5 g. Divide by 5.5 to both sides, and that gets something like, oh, I don't remember off the top of my head. I think it's like 14.7. But this time it says, give your answer as an integer value and do not include units. I was being nice this time. So an integer value, this should be 15, and then no units. I did accept 14.7 in this one just because <laughs> to make you know that you're going along the right track. but. I am going to take off points if it's not in the right format. 
Questions 13 and 17 refer to this scenario with the special highlighted key words that you totally remember. And you totally remember every time you see constant velocity. That means balanced forces. This is dynamic equilibrium. And since it's balanced forces, we know what we're going to say to Ben in just a second in number 14. In the free body diagram, A is the normal force. Friction is B, going to the left, working against the motion. Gravity is, let's see, gravity is C, so we're going to have to move that and applied forces down and to the right. And Ben says, this must have a net force because it's moving, but that's not true. Because it is moving with constant velocity, it's in a state of dynamic equilibrium. So two things I want to do here. First, I need to fix my spelling. I was typing too fast. So I would also want to make an explicit statement. Do I agree with Ben? No, I do not agree with Ben. Because it is moving with constant velocity, it's in a state of dynamic equilibrium. In this state, the net force is zero. It doesn't need a net force to move. Now that's an important consideration because a lot of times people think in order to move, there must be a net force. And that's not true. If the sled was already in motion and the net force is zero, it will stay in motion. For number 15, the normal force on the sled is greater than the weight of the sled and child together. And for this, I'm going to draw something that might help. Let's say that I'm drawing and I have a scale. And on top of the scale, I put the sled and the kid. That's a, that's a kid. Ta-da! I don't know where their lower half is. It just doesn't fit on the sled, okay? So remember that the normal force is the force that the scale would read. Because the applied force is down and to the right. Imagine if you push down on this child and sled apparatus. The scale would read greater than their weight because you're applying a downward force. Whereas if you were pulling up on the sled, the normal force would be smaller. So that means greater than for 15, decreasing for 16. If you stop pushing the sled, it would accelerate to the left. And that wording kind of bothers people. But look what would happen if you took away force D. If you took away force D, there's more force left than right. That means even though it was traveling to the right, it's going to accelerate left. That means it will slow down. Accelerate and decelerate mean the same things. Accelerate left, ah, if we could cross out that word, accelerate left can mean decelerate, could be negative acceleration. 18 and 19, for this one we know it's in static equilibrium. It says that it's at rest. At rest means static equilibrium. Equilibrium means balanced forces, my friends. Now, with the sine and cosine thing, a thing that will help is I want you to picture what the sines and cosines do. The sines and cosines lets us have components for the x direction. That would be our cosine components and components for the y direction. And once I replace my diagonal forces with these components, I can see a few things really easily. First off, I can see that the x and y directions should have zero net force. That means t1x, which goes with cosine, is equal to t2x, which goes with cosine. I also see that together, the T2Y and T2X, ah, I said that wrong, the T2Y and the T1Y have to add up to T3. So what that means for my equations is the X components equal each other, because that's right cancels left. X goes with cosine. 
In the y direction, it's two y components upwards, so two sine and sine going up, canceling t3 pulling down. So let's say you get a job at Amazon. We're going to go draw a free body diagram. Notice this is worth four points. So what are those points for? Let's check it out. Now, on the iPad, if you were drawing by hand, yeah, that kind of sucks. But if you use this draw tool, go switch to line, that makes your life easier. OK, so there is a normal force going upward. There is an applied force that you're applying up and to the right. So maybe I apply a force like here. Uh, there. Well, I'll do this. I've got enough space for that. OK, what I'm trying to do, as I say, like I'm, I'm trying to make sure I have enough space. What I'm trying to do is make sure I have enough space to fit my vectors properly. In this case, if I have one x component to the right, my friction arrow should only be one arrow long, or one box long. One box to the left cancels one box to the right. Hey, question. How long does my y component for gravity have to be? It's got to be four boxes long. And the reason I know this is because I see two forces upward whose component is two boxes each. Now let's add on some labels so that we can write nicely. We've got the applied force, the gravity force, the friction force, and the normal force. Check. When it says use grid lines to ensure you've drawn proportionally, I really was having to look at the size of your vectors relative to each other. Normal force should be less than gravity and not equal to it. If you did things like you left off the arrows or you didn't label those, then you didn't get full points. Now I've got my position versus time graph problems. Notice these questions kind of go in order, vaguely go in order for what we did for the unit. And we ended the unit with graphs. So position versus time, we're matching graphs plus free body diagrams. A is accelerating to the right. I can tell because it's a curve facing upwards. So A should be here. Now you can drag and drop. But if you are having trouble moving B to here, you can click it. So in this case, D, click, move here. And it doesn't matter what order you put these in. Because A is accelerating, it should have a free body diagram that shows unbalanced forces. But B, C, and D are not accelerating. So they need to show balanced forces. A thing people got stuck on, B and C are moving, but they are in dynamic equilibrium, which means balanced forces. So matching the regions. A then is not in equilibrium. It's accelerating. B and C are going at constant velocity, so they're in dynamic, and D was static. Now, to tell if they're going forward or backward, how can we tell the appropriate direction of moving? Well, A has increasing position, and so does B. The position for B has increased. B started at 50 meters and ends at 70 meters. B goes 20 meters forward, but C goes from 70 meters to 20 meters. C goes negative 50 meters backward. C, negative. D, unmoving. Now, for this one, we're going to do its speed, velocity, distance. And in order to get the distance, I need to add up all the ways it's moved from A and B together. I see that in section A, in section A, it moved 50 meters forward. In section B, it moved 20 meters forward. In section C, it moved 50 meters backward. But remember, distances are all positive, And D is unmoving. 
That makes 120 meters for distance. But displacement or change in position is different. Change in position doesn't matter what you do in the meantime. You just take your final minus initial position. In this case, my final position was 20. My initial position was zero. And overall, the change in position was 20 meters positive forward. So let's add that into our chart and see what that looks like. I should have my distance being 120, so move that up. Change in position was only 20, so move that up. I know that velocity is 20 divided by 14. It's the change in position divided by time. So 20 divided by 14 would be 1.4. And that leaves my speed as 8.6. Or check it if you want, 120 divided by 8.6. For this problem, there was a keyword that people missed. That keyword was this whole once every five seconds. And because it's once every five seconds, that means from picture to picture is five seconds of time. So that's five seconds, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, no. Hold on, I can count by fives, I swear. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25 seconds. There we go. All right, so I've got 25 seconds of time. It's 100 meters in length. We're calculating a speed. Speed is distance over time. That would be 100 meters in 25 seconds. To give me an answer of four, it says put in a whole number without units. That's where my four came from. If you missed this once every five seconds, you would have been off by five and gave me 20. This one I know people had a particular problem on because they were having trouble drag and dropping. But remember, click, add. A is going constant velocity. Click, add. B is speeding up. Car B is speeding up. <laughs> it is accelerating. And finally, let's draw some graphs. Remember, use the line feature if you like drawing straight lines. Car C has half the speed of A. So it would start in the same place, but have the same slope. And car D, which we'll change the line for, is going to start above it. So start at a higher position, but go at the same speed as car A, so not as car C. Then we add some text in here. This is car C. This is car D. Click and submit. All right, guys, remember, watch only the parts of video that you need to, and I will see you for your test on Wednesday. Good luck.